Dawn uh, gets our presentation up, I will introduce myself. Um, my name is Emily McEntee. I'm the Associate Director of Admission here at Beloit College. And I am Dawn Red. I am also one of our Associate Directors and work closely with our student athletes. All right. Um, so, and Dawn, you can go ahead and get us started. Um, today, what we are going to be talking about is uh, a little bit more about our community and who uh, lives and works at Beloit, um, what makes our campus so special, and how those two converge. But what we think it's important that no matter what you decide to study, what you decide to be involved in, whatever your combination of things are, um, at Beloit, you're going to walk away with these four skills that you see on the screen. You're going to be a productive collaborator. You're going to be intellectually and professionally agile. You're going to be a creative problem solver and you're going to be an effective communicator because no matter what career you go into or what program, you're going to need those things. Uh, but our campus uh, has 1150 fantastic students who really come to us from all over and you can see that on the slide in front of you too. One of my favorite parts is that half of our students come from 500 miles away. Um, so when you're in these small classroom settings, you are not only going to be learning from a textbook, but you're going to be learning from everyone in the classroom and their lived experience. So our average class size is 15 students, but to put that in a little more context for you, 98% of our classes are 30 students or less. So that's what we mean at Beloit when we talk about small class sizes. And that student faculty ratio is 10 to 1, so you never have to fight for attention. We have two gems on campus. Uh, we have two teaching museums. We have our Logan Museum of Anthropology and our Wright Museum of Art. So between the two spaces, you have over 400,000 pieces. Um, fantastic if you're a museum studies student or an art or an anthropology student, but even if you're a creative writing major or a biology student, these are going to be spaces that are like additional classrooms for you too. All right, and now I'm here to talk to you guys about Beloit. So the first question I'm sure you're thinking is, where is Beloit? <laughs> so we are in Beloit, Wisconsin. So we're about an hour away from Chicago, about an hour away from Milwaukee, um, about an hour away from Madison. Lots of good airports close by for those folks who are coming from a bit of a distance. Beloit itself, like the city, has tons of cool things to offer. Obviously, I'm biased, but I think there's a lot of cool things. We've got a cool film festival, an awesome downtown with what I think is a, an amazing farmer's market. Um, lots of uh, international headquarters for businesses um, where our students are able to intern um, or even get jobs after they're finished with um, their careers here at Beloit. Um, and also a lot of cool stuff. We've got this awesome river that runs right alongside um, of our campus where our students are able to get out there and kayak or do different things on the river. So a lot of cool things that way. Um, about the college itself, right? So we're the oldest continuously operated college. So that's a, bit, that's a mouthful, right? But there is another college that was started the same year that we started, but they closed and then opened back up. So that's why we say this thing. Um, but it has been here for a long time um, and it's got a lot of history but still innovative and creative uh, for today's market. And you're gonna hear a little bit about that um, later on. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about an education that works. Sorry about that. It wouldn't be <laughs> Zoom if you didn't leave yourself on mute for a little longer than you should. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so when it comes to the academic piece, um, first we're going to talk a little bit about the majors and the minors that we offer on campus. Um, so you can see a few of our most popular majors up here on the screen. Keep in mind, we have over 40 majors and minors available on campus. So even if you don't see it up here, you can always feel free to ask us now or ask your admissions counselor later. Sometimes we just word things a little bit differently than what you're used to, but we might still have a program that's a great fit for you. Um, due to a lack of gen eds or a core curriculum on campus that you need to jump through for your first two years, you can dive into your major right away which is how a third of our students are able to double major and still graduate within a four year time period. We are big believers that as you're exploring what you're interested in and exploring your passions, you should be exploring with passion. And so we have a few different avenues set up that students are able to do that through. Uh, the liberal arts and practice requirement is something that students have to do before graduation. 
requires that you do at least one internship or one stint of original research while you're at the college. So you're really getting that real world hands on experience with what you're interested in um, in a non COVID world. Uh, about 40% of our students would study abroad um, and go to a real big variety of countries. You can choose to fulfill major courses while you're abroad, or you can take a variety of others that we don't necessarily offer on campus uh, to really broaden your perspective while doing cultural immersion as well. Uh, research with faculty members happens all the time, and if you're someone who doesn't know what research is or is intimidated by doing that with a faculty, that's okay. You're going to have faculty on Boyd's campus that are supportive and are going to teach you what research is alongside with what they're doing. So that way, when you're a senior or a junior or even a sophomore, you have the confidence to do this research on your own, too. Um, we have CELEB, which stands for our Center for Entrepreneurship and the Liberal Education at Beloit. Everything in college is an acronym, so that's one of ours. Um, but really, this is a hub for everything from a maker's lab to a recording studio to a student-run art gallery. So you can walk away from a little bit of involvement at Celeb with a huge set of skills that you'll be able to take with you on a resume um, or just to inform what you might be interested in. And then we have our Career and Community Engagement Center. So everything that you might need in terms of cover letter development, writing a resume, doing a mock interview, doing a mock Zoom interview, um, they're gonna be the ones to make sure that you're headed in the right direction after college. All right, but we can't do all of this without supporting the, the students that we have on campus uh, in their academic journey. So first we have our Learning Enrichment and Disability Services Office. They are an office that work with students with documented uh, disabilities. They help you learn how to self-advocate for yourself on a college campus. And they also learn, or they also teach you where that information goes. So they help coordinate if information needs to go to housing or your faculty members, um, but they are kind of your partners right alongside you, um, teaching you those skills. Uh, and when it comes to skills, the Writing Center is also really helpful for all students. So these services are free. All of these are free that we're talking about today, um, but with the Writing Center, it's a great opportunity to have your papers reviewed. Maybe you've always written papers in MLA and all of a sudden a professor wants you to write with APA citation and you just need an extra set of eyes. Or it's your first time writing a scientific paper and you want a little bit of guidance with that. The Writing Center and the tutors over there are going to be able to assist you. Our Office for International Education is there to support our domestic students while they're looking for study abroad programs and our international student population while they're here on campus too. Um, so they're a big hub for advising and support. And then on the right side of your screen, you'll see a lot of different programs there. Um, these are programs with eligibility requirements. So it might require that you're first gen, low income, have a documented disability, a domestic minority, undocumented, maybe you identify as part of the LGBTQ plus population. Um, and really these programs encompass everything from graduate school preparation and searching for graduate schools um, to peer support and experience groups um, and really just bridge programs, other programs to help make sure that you not only feel like you belong on campus, but you feel like you're thriving on campus too. All right, so I'm excited, not that I'm not excited about all of them, but I'm super excited about this one because in my previous life before I was in admissions, I was on the student life side. So all the kind of the non-academic things that happen on a campus. Um, so I'm excited to talk to you guys about some of the things that we've got going. So the big one um, is our powerhouse. The powerhouse is an amazing place for all sorts of things. So one of the kind of catchphrases on campus this year, which I'm sure you can understand with COVID and everything, but I think this will outlast it, is self-care is community care. Like take care of yourself, right? And then you'll be able to be like a great member of our campus community. So there's all sorts of things that can happen in the powerhouse. You can go there and eat. We've got a place to eat there. Of course, you can work out because we talked about it. it's a workout facility. Um, you can study there. Tons of hangout spaces for people to get together and study with other folks or even just do it by yourself. Um, there's spaces there for classes to be held. And there's also places like if you, you or maybe one of your friends is competing on the team, 
Um, our pool is over there. Our, our uh, swim and dive team is going to be able to go over there um, and have actual competitions. And we also have our health and wellness centers there. So um, whether you're needing the, to chat with our school nurse or maybe uh, have a discussion with one of our counseling. We have free counseling services on campus. So all of that that I just said is all in the powerhouse. So there's a lot going on there. We're all super excited about it. Um, just opened up last February. So our campus didn't really have it for long before we were, were taken away um, for COVID. So now that everyone's back on campus, it's, um, it's just a hub of awesome activity there. So then we've got all of this stuff. So like I said, this is um, just talking about the non-academic stuff. Um, Beloit College is a residential campus. That means that people stay on campus for all four years for the most part. Like it's pretty rare for students to move off campus um, because of that. Um, and we talked a little bit about kind of our people coming from all over the place. So because of all of that, we have to offer all sorts of things for students to to be able to have fun, um, to, do, to do things besides study, even though studying is super important. Um, so let's talk a little bit. So we talked about the powerhouse, talked about the health and wellness center um, that's within the powerhouse. We've got a couple dining spaces on campus. One is kind of like an all you can eat, um, sit there and you know chit chat with your friends um, kind of a place. And then we also have within the powerhouse, so there's more of a grab and go, you want to get some ice cream or you want to get a sandwich, you know, things like that. Um, you want to just kind of run and grab it, take it back to your room or take it back to hang out, you know, in another part of the powerhouse. So we've got a couple of those um, options there in terms of residential life. So like I said, we are a residential campus, which means most people stay on all four years. Um, and we have all sorts of different housing. Like we have traditional, like what maybe you think of in your head is kind of like a high rise dorm. We have those kind of things. Uh, we've got um, fraternity and sorority houses on campus. We've also got um, like affinity houses. Like maybe you're super interested in French and you wanna live on the French house or you're super interested in the environment and you wanna live on the, um, outdoor education for, you know, different things like that, right? So we've got all that sort of stuff um, that's available to you as well. And as of right now, and I always use that as my caveat, but as of right now, um, singles don't cost any more than doubles or things like that, right? So um, you've got some options in terms of your housing on campus. And like I said, Beloit College is your home once you're there, so there's all sorts of things that are happening. So if you're wanting to go to a concert or be a part of an intramurals team. All of that stuff um, happens on our campus. And I think one of the cool things that we offer too is lots and lots of student employment opportunities. So of course you'll be able to work with a professor or do different things like that that um, Emily mentioned to you before in terms of research and stuff. But you could also work in the powerhouse or you can uh, help out with uh, our student government and bringing different activities onto campus. Like there's all sorts of cool things um, that are available to you um, on our campus. And um, if you would like to be a member of a team, you certainly can. We're a division three school. Um, I always encourage people, if you are interested in participating in sports, shoot an email to the coach. It's just that simple. Send them an email. They're going to respond to you. If you've got a link to something, you know, whether it's a time, or, uh, if you're a runner or a swimmer, um, or if you've got a link to a video, if you're on a team sport, um, just send that to them, start a conversation, um, and you'd be surprised at how receptive they're going to be to that. I think I'm going to pass right. it on to Emily. Yes, because, um, you know, COVID has affected us all in different ways. And we at Beloit early on in the spring um, recognized that we need to come up with an action plan to handle all of the changes that are happening so that we're making sure we're keeping students at the front of all this and that they're able to balance their education with everything else happening in life right now. So we developed something called the Beloit Action Plan. I'll go through all five pieces pretty quickly, but if you have questions, feel free to throw them in the Q&A and Don and I will be able to address them. Um, but the first, uh, portion of that are mods or modules. So instead of the traditional semester, we broke the semester in half. Um, students on a typical year would take four classes. Instead, now they're taking two classes in the first mod, two classes in the second mod. 
So at the end of the length of a traditional semester, you'll still have completed four classes, but you'll do it in a way that is more paced out and that you can focus on less at once so that you can balance any personal pressures that you might be feeling or stress along with your academic experience. And then um, we have our advanced mentoring program uh, or AMP for short on campus. Now, advising and mentoring is something we've always been doing on campus. This is nothing new for us, um, but we have uh, a system where through our advanced mentoring program, if you decide Beloit's the place for me and you put your enrollment deposit down, within 72 hours, we will actually match you with your faculty advisor. So you get your faculty advisor months before you actually get to campus and step foot on campus potentially. So they are kind of your first connection. They'll help you pick out your classes. It gives you a small cohort of students and it gives you that direction. And then that direction leads really well into something that we developed called career channels. So these, I like to think of them almost as 360 degree advising programs. Um, they are thematic, so there's different themes such as health and healing, business and entrepreneurship, and a few more. Um, but it banks all of the available classes on campus that relate to these fields, um, all the faculty and staff who you would be able to interact with, and it helps you explore careers. So that way, in case right now you're saying, I want to work within health, but I don't know where to start. This is going to be a channel that helps you explore many career possibilities. And then on the flip side, if you're like, I know exactly what I want to do and I want to work in emergency medicine, well, then it's going to be a career that helps expose you to that and get you a professional network along with it. Dawn and I are really excited about our Midwest flagship match program. Um, with COVID, we recognized that a lot of students wanted to stay a little closer to home for college, but not have to sacrifice a small individualized experience. So for students in Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, and Minnesota, um, we promise that if you're admitted, the cost of your tuition will not exceed the cost of tuition at your state flagship institution. Um, the exact numbers for those are on our website. Even if you just type in flagship match into the search bar, it can bring those up for you. But we just want to show you that Beloit is affordable even earlier on. And if you're outside of the Midwest, we're still affordable and we can talk to you about that. Dawn will talk to you a little bit at the end too. And then kind of rounding it out is the Beloit promise. So this is an ongoing commitment that Beloit is saying, students are the reason why we're here and students are gonna be the main motivation for everything that we do on campus. So it's taken on a couple different forms and it probably will continue to take on new forms. In the spring, that meant us committing to our current students that we weren't gonna raise tuition. There was not gonna be an additional financial stress with everything else going on in the academic year closing out. Um, and then recently in the spring, for all students who uh, enrolled in, in classes, either virtually or in person, we told them that they would have a ninth and 10th tuition free semester. So that way they can maybe recover a little bit more of a traditional college experience later, but they can use that time to dive into topics more deeply without an additional expense. All right. So what happens next? Hopefully you've been listening and thinking, man, that sounds awesome. I want to hear some more about how I can apply to Beloit. And that is why we're here. <laughs> we're here to talk to you about that. Okay, so what does uh, Beloit require for an application? We only need four things. Uh, we need an application, right? So we take Common App. So if you're applying to a whole bunch of Common App schools, add Beloit, it makes it a little bit easy for you. Um, but we also have our own um, application that you can find on our website. We need a teacher recommendation. And we also need a couple things from your high school counselor. So we need a transcript and what's called a secondary school report. And all that is, is just a form that tells us a little bit about your school. Like it tells us how many students go there. Um, maybe if your school offers AP classes and it gives them, gives your counselor a chance to say a little bit of something nice about you. Um, but we do have some other things. Um, we do not have an application fee. Um, we are also test optional. We have been for about 10 years. Um, I know this year is kind of a wonky year. You're, it's going to be, you're going to be hard pressed to find a test this year. Uh, but we are uh, 
test blind, uh, which means that you do not have to turn in your test scores and nothing is affected by that. We're still going to evaluate your uh, application just as we would um, everything else, right? It doesn't affect your admission decision. It doesn't affect your financial aid. You do not have to turn uh, a test score in to us at all. Hey, other things that you could turn in if you just wanted to. Um, we'll take more than one teacher recommendation. Maybe you have two teachers who just think you're fabulous. Uh, we'll read those. Um, we do what's called holistic admissions here at Beloit. So that means we don't have a chart with like a little GPA that says, okay, yes. Or another one that says, oh, nope, you can't get in. Um, we're gonna read all of it. We're gonna read your essay that you write. We're gonna read all your letters of recommendation. And we're gonna look at your transcript and see you know, what kind of classes you've taken. Of course, we're gonna look at your grades as well. Um, but all of that stuff um, goes into your admissions decision. Um, so you know, be confident to know that your, the case that you present isn't just your uh, transcript. All right, so affordability, and Emily kind of mentioned this before that, I mean, Beloit is just super, in my opinion, and I'm biased, obviously I work here, but we're just committed. Um, to make Beloit affordable. Like if you want Beloit to be an option for you, our financial aid office is gonna do their very best to make sure um, that it's financially feasible for you and your family. So I always call the cost of attendance the big scary number, because I know like everyone looks at that and you know, you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, that is a lot of money. Um, I can assure you that most people aren't paying that. You know, you can, 98% of our students are, are getting some sort of financial aid. Um, so I always tell folks, just go through the process, right? Get your FAFSA in, get all that stuff in, and get the financial aid package. Um, because you, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at what our financial aid department gives back to you. We've got lots of merit scholarships. That merit scholarships are the ones kind of based on either, um, Emily had mentioned our Midwest flagship match, so it could be something like that. Could be academic scholarships. So that's the money that you don't have to pay back. Um, so that goes up to $36,000. We do have a few um, additional scholarships. So mm -hmm. maybe you're into music or maybe you've been, you've studied abroad already as a high school student. Um, so we have kind of smaller ones. So for our big ones, the ones that go up to $36,000, you don't have to, there's no like separate application process or anything like that. Your application to Beloit is going to get you considered for all of that stuff. Um, maybe for some of our smaller ones, like our uh, study abroad scholarship, or maybe our music scholarship, there is an extra step, right? You're going to have to um, apply. And for music, you're going to have to audition in some form or fashion for that. And we mentioned before about campus employment. I think it's awesome. Like, to me, it's one of those things of why wouldn't you do it? Because um, you're getting this amazing opportunity to get some really good experience. Um, it's optional. You don't have to take the campus employment. Um, but you'd have this great, great opportunity to graduate with not just your degree, but a whole bunch of experience as well, um, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, and then, as you can see here, so the average cost of attendance after the financial aid, right, is a little bit less than $20,000. So, of course, that means some people are maybe a little bit below that, some people are a little bit above that. Um, so, like I said, go through the process, um, but I, I would say the good news is most folks aren't paying like the big scary number. Most folks aren't at the 65,000. Most folks are gonna be, you know, around that average there. Okay, so you can graduate with confidence. Um, I love this slide because it's like 94% of our people are doing, doing the thing they wanna do, whether they're going into the workforce or whether they're going to grad school, they're doing that thing that they came here to do, which is amazing. Um, and this number, so I, I think that this 85% number is gonna go up. We've added our advanced mentor uh, program since we've gotten that 85% number. We were already pretty awesome at advising, but I think this has taken advising to the, whole, the next level now. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if that 85% goes up. Advising is just really our strength, like it's our thing. Um, like if you lined up a whole bunch of schools, just like Beloit, that said, oh, well, you're gonna have small class sizes. Oh, you're gonna get a chance to know your professor. And lots of schools can say that, but not a lot of schools can talk about advising um, in the way that we do it. I think we do a pretty awesome job with that. 
And then before we get to the questions, just wanted to let you know, and of course, all of this stuff that we've talked about is online. So of course you can find Emily and I's contact information online, um, but did want to just let you know that this is who we are. This is how you can get in touch with us. Um, and I guess at this point, um, we can head over, can I pass it over to you, Emily, and we can uh, check the Q&A and kind of see where we are with that. Yeah, and so, um, sorry, I forgot to mention this kind of at the start, but feel free to throw your questions, you know, in the box. Um, no one will know it's you asking it, but you have two Beloit experts, I'll, I'll say that for us, um, who are here and ready to answer any questions. So even if it seems simple, um, navigating college websites usually aren't, so we can help you with that. Um, but it looks like we already have one question, and I think this would be perfect for you, Don. Um, kind of asking about the balance of being a student and athlete. So I'm guessing maybe, is it overwhelming? Can I also do other things on campus, or does that take up all of my time? But student athlete life. Yeah, so yeah, in my previous life, like I said, I used to be on the student life side. So I was actually one of our coaches um, here for years. Um, and I would say the reason people come to Beloit College is that they are able to balance other things, right? So in general, I would say athletics in high school is going to be a lot, right? So you're, you're in class from maybe what, seven to three. And then right after that, you've got practice. You know, it's just kind of a long day. It's a different day in college. Of course, the time management is a little bit different. Um, but you're going to have time to do this. So one of the things I always tell folks is if it's something that you're interested in, even if you're not 100% sure right now, like you're thinking, I, I'm not exactly sure um, that I want to be on a team. Sending an email to the coach isn't going to guarantee your spot on a team. Like it's just getting a conversation started um, because you are able to balance our athletes our students first, right? Like that's why they come here. They come here because Beloit's a really good academic school, but also they have this passion for sports that they know this is kind of the last time that they're going to be able to be on a team and they want that experience but they're here for school. You know, we've had students who double major, um, students who want to go pre-med. I mean, they're, they're studying abroad. They're doing everything that every other student's doing um, and also able to balance their um, sports. So if it's something that you want to do, it's certainly doable. I'm hoping that along, is that good, Emily? Yeah. And then along with that, it looks like there was a follow-up that came in. Um, do student athletes earn scholarship money? Perfect. So we're Division Three school. Um, so they earn academic scholarships just like everyone else, right? So through their um, work in the classroom, um, just like a non-athlete, or through maybe their location. We were talking about Midwest flagship match, um, but we do not offer, and there is no Division Three school that does offer, um, at, you know, athletic scholarships. So scholarships based on your athletic skill um, doesn't happen at the Division Three level. Great. So um, when it comes to housing, you know, let's talk a minute about how dorms are assigned because the question came in, are dorms assigned differently if you're a freshman versus a junior? Because we do have such a variety. Um, and so I'll kick it off and then Don chime in, please. But um, yeah, at Beloit, we have 32 different living options. So it's everything like Don said, your very traditional look at what a dorm is to an apartment or a suite or a special interest, like she said. And so during your first year, we place you in a traditional kind of dorm room experience. It's the best way to build camaraderie with students, we think, um, and your peers. Uh, but after that, it's a little bit of a free for all. If you want to live in an apartment, you can. If you want to live in a townhome or if you want to apply for one of those special interest spaces. Um, and like Don said, as of right now, all of that is one flat rate. So even if you're choosing a more independent living style, as of right now, you're all paying the same fee. So that way, um, we don't see a socioeconomic divide on campus of who lives where. Yeah, and I would say the only other thing, I guess, kind of keeping going with the um, athlete things. Sometimes a coach may want their folks to stay together. Um, every coach is different. So some coaches really want their athletes to stay together. Um, some coaches want their athletes just to be with another athlete, like someone who just kind of understands like, ooh, they've got an early morning practice. Like we need to be quiet at nighttime, like that sort of thing. Um, and I guess the only other thing is that um, for the townhouses, like we have these really awesome like apartment style houses. Um, there's just a lottery system. So it's super egalitarian, I think. Like it's not... Like Emily said, it's not about how much money you have, it's just the number that you drew um, in the lottery for it. 
Yeah. All right, so then it looks like we're getting a lot of questions about academics. So let's switch over to academic life. Um, we have a student asking about um, students starting their majors within their first year because they're able to start jumping into those courses. What about a student who isn't sure what they want to do? How, how do we avoid, help them figure out what they want to do? Like this is my, I love this about Beloit. So whenever anyone says, well, I'm not sure. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> we're so good with like everyone. I, I always call it like that spectrum of like, I know exactly what I want to do in college to like, I have no idea what I want to do. Like we're really good because of the advising. Um, and even for the folks who come in knowing exactly what they want to do, um, knowing what you want to do and knowing the steps that it takes to get there are two separate things, right? And that's where that advising comes in. Um, and wherever you are, like you might kind of have an idea what you want to do, you might have no idea, but that's the advising and your advisors are going to get a chance to know you. They're going to get a chance to know your strengths academically. They're going to get a chance to know your goals um, academically and after um, Beloit. And then they're going to advise you that then that gives them right some room to help advise you on what classes to take and things like that. Um, but to me, that's where we shine. We shine with um, helping the students figure out what their major is, if they already know what that is, uh, to, to, you know, broaden it even more. Okay, you know what you want to do. Well, that, let's get you some internships. Let's get you connected with some alums who maybe are already doing that thing that you want to do. Um, there's all sorts of great opportunities. Um, and I'll let, I'm sure Emily has some other things there. Yeah, I mean, I, right, I was that student. So mm -hmm. you have a soft spot with me because you're not, you're not undecided. You have to click undecided on a lot of forms, but it's not, you're just multi-interested. You haven't narrowed it down. And colleges are offering all these classes that you never got a chance to take in high school. How do you know you want to be an anthropology major if you've never taken a class? Um, so that's where we, like Donna saying, we like to start help explore because it's not about making our mind up right away. Um, and typically you have an idea of what you don't like, and that's a good starting point. You might say, I don't know what I want to do, but when I ask you your least favorite classes, you're like, don't make me take a biology or chemistry. Um, or I hate creative writing. I'll write a scientific research paper, but don't make me do that. Mm -hmm. So you have all these bits that an advisor is going to help pull out for you and help show you disciplines that might be of interest to you. Um, but it just means that you get the same level of advising as every other student who knows what they want to do, just in a different way. Um, oh, Dawn, you want to talk a little bit or start us off on a little bit about engineering on campus? Yeah, um, yeah. I would love it. Um, so we have a dual degree program here. Um, where you're going to get kind of the foundation uh, of an engineering degree. So dual degree means you're going to get your undergraduate degree here. Um, as long as you do all the things that you need to do here, you know, meet all the requirements for the graduate schools. And we have two um, uh, graduate programs that we're affiliated with. Um, one at Washington University in St. Louis which is an amazing school, and RPI, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, um, in, in New York, which is another awesome um, engineering school. Um, so as long as you do everything here, right, make sure you're academically strong, which of course you will be because our advising is strong and they're gonna make sure you stay on track. Um, you're gonna be accepted into that program, right? So you would finish your undergraduate degree here, right, get your um, bachelor's degree, and then have admission into one of those two programs, for your master's degree. Now I'll let you finish up. That sound all right, Emily? Yeah, no, that sounds great. And you know, even if you choose not to do a three, two or a four, two program, our students interested in engineering have just as much success, if not more. And it's because you're gonna have the research chops and you're gonna have the instrument experience to be able to get you into any program that you'd like um, and to get you pretty far. So we had a student a few years back who actually did research during his sophomore and junior years with a classmate. That research was published in a textbook that is used at the high school level with physics. Um, and then he got essentially what is a full ride offer to Penn uh, for his PhD in engineering. So, you know, just like anything in life, there's no linear pathway. So it's about figuring out what pace do you want to do things at and how do you want to find your specific niche or interest within engineering along the way. Um, yeah. Okay. So, oh, 
research. So research that students have done, maybe specific project or areas they've focused on, even if it's outside of science, so maybe in psychology or um, even more humanities based because, um, and I'll call you out, Carla, you are correct. Research is not just for STEM fields. Everyone can do research. Yeah. Yeah, and I know that we've got, so you mentioned uh, psychology. Actually, one of our psychology professors, because there's a couple tracks you can take with psychology. Of course, you can do clinical, like I want to be a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Um, or you can uh, do more research-based or maybe use that psychology degree to go into a different field. Um, but I know one of our uh, psychology professors is an animal psychologist. So she goes down um, to Chicago, which we told you is about an hour away from here, and spends a lot of time down there just working with animal behaviorists and different things like that. So there's, and I know that she's brought um, students along with her um, to do this sort of research. So certainly, um, our professors are here for the students. Um, the good part about a school like us is you're not battling with graduate students um, for those research opportunities. Uh, I've seen it over and over again where students have this great idea and the professor agrees that, hey, that is a great idea. <laughs> we should do that research. And the two of them collaborate um, on that research. Um, so it's certainly something that happens across the board, like you said, not just in the STEM fields. Yeah, and it can happen during the school year. It can happen over the summer. I had a student who was interested in astrophysics. Um, she was my intern two years ago, and she would spend uh, her summers, she spent her the summer after her sophomore year and the summer after junior year um, down at Baylor with a faculty member because Britt Sharonhouse, one of our physics faculty members, had a friend at Baylor, and she said, you would like what my friend is doing. Let's get you down there for that. Um, and so your faculty have connections that they can help make, even if it's something Boyd's not doing. But um, yeah, you think about within anthropology, the amount of research that goes into researching cultures and cultural practice and how different cultures sustain over time. Or we have Native American um, effigy or burial mounds on campus. And students have done research not only into the history and the significance of those uh, for the populations whose land this is and was, um, but saying, hey, how can we as a campus better respect this space that we're occupying um, and really doing some research to inform, um, to inform some new policies and practices. So there are things that you can be doing to help your kind of surrounding ecosystem or just to get curious about the area around you too. Um, and when it, um, cheesy segues galore today, when it comes to the area around us, um, we're getting the question about, you know, can you tell us a little bit more about the town the college is housed within? So maybe just more about Beloit and how we're connected to the city of Beloit. Yeah. Do you want me to start? I've been putting you on the spot. How about I'll kick it off and then you can do <laughs> it? So I actually live in the city of Beloit and I have for the past eight years and this has been a strong second home for Dawn for even longer than me. So, um, you know, within the city you have the downtown area, which is just like a three to five minute walk off campus, depending on your walking pace, uh, where you have food and stores and everything you need there. Um, there are a lot of parks. There's a state park actually not too far away. Um, there's the river with the boathouse. And so you have this cool blend of, I want to go to Walgreens because I want to get my candy, uh, but I also want to be in nature and be around people appreciating hiking paths or a bike path, or I want to go running with a bunch of people from campus. Um, so you have some name brand stores that you'll recognize, and you'll also have um, some things that are a little bit more local to Beloit that'll make you miss it when you're gone. Yeah, I feel like Beloit, so like if you came here, like you, when, when you hear, I guess it depends on where you're coming from. It, maybe if you hear a, a city of about 37,000, maybe that sounds big, or maybe where you are, that sounds small. Um, but I can tell you it's spread out. So we're not kind of all condensed together. Um, I think when you drive through Beloit, you wouldn't think that there's only 37,000 people. I mean, we've got kind of a couple different parts of the city, like, like Emily said, kind of within walking distance is our cool kind of small business, locally owned things. The homes around campus are these like gorgeous, you know, 100 year old homes that just look amazing. 
But then we also have Starbucks, right? You got to have Starbucks and Buffalo Wild Wings and, you know, newer homes, uh, you know, that are more kind of suburby feeling. So we've got kind of different parts of it, uh, which I think is really awesome. Like, I think it's one of the cooler things about Beloit that we do have kind of this homey, small downtown feel, but with all the other stuff that you need too, right? So you can run to Walmart or go grab a cup of coffee at Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or something like that. Um, so I think it's kind of the best of both worlds here. It really is. And, you know, building off of that, one of the things you'll find different about Beloit than a lot of other small liberal arts colleges is that we are not in the middle of nowhere, or we're not in the middle of cornfields. You're surrounded by other towns and cities and suburbs. So, you know, even if there's not a target in town, guess what? It's 14 minutes away in McChesney Park, Illinois. So you never feel like you get bored because you're not isolated um, in a rural setting, uh, but you don't have to live in a super urban setting if maybe that's what you've lived in and you want a change of pace or you just know that's not for you either, uh, but you have plenty of things to do. Um, in a 30 minute radius, so 30 minutes north, 30 minutes south, you have half a million people. So even if 37,000 or 36,000 sounds small to you, we're part of a greater area, which is really cool too. Okay, so. All right, sorry, just computer froze a little bit, um, but it looks like, um, is there a forensics club at school? How about scholarships for students who practice forensics? So we don't have a specific scholarship for students who practice forensics or have been involved in forensics. Um, as Dawn mentioned, uh, the additional scholarships that we offer for students are aimed toward music, students who have done uh, study abroad, um, so along those lines. But keep in mind, that's a huge part of your high school experience. That's going to be in your application, and that's going to be a part of what we consider for merit scholarship awarding, uh, because we want to see what you're in, what you're passionate about, what you've spent your time on. Maybe you like it so much, that's what your essay's written about. No pressure if it's not. Um, so even if it's not a direct scholarship, keep in mind, it's part of your story, and so it's going to be acknowledged in that way. Yeah, and then as far as a forensics club, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but I'm not sure if Don knows either. I don't, I have not heard of one, um, yeah. but as I'm sure Emily can tell you, you can always start one up. All you need is like four of your good friends who also are interested in forensics and you can start up a club. There's tons of clubs already. And kind of like Emily was saying, like maybe that's a high school story and you're going to start a new story when you're in college, or maybe it's something that you want to continue on. It, it depends on when you get here or when you hop online and look at all the other different options that are available um, for clubs on campus. Um, maybe it's something you want to keep going. Maybe it's not, but that's the good part is if it is, you can start one up. Hmm. And, you know, any questions that aren't answered here today, because we have a quite a few that we're not going to be able to get to in the next minute. Um, but keep in mind, we are going to get all of these questions at the end. So Dawn and I will be able to follow up in the coming weeks, or we'll be able to introduce you to your specific admissions counselor here at Beloit, and we'll be able to get you this info. So even if you're not hearing it live, you're going to hear from us pretty quickly. All right, and it looks like with that, we're about wrapped up with our time. So um, I would like to say thank you for spending part of your Sunday with us. Really um, appreciate it. Yeah, weekends are, you know, valuable time. And so the fact that you are using it for the college search says a lot about you. And we really appreciate that. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to mention um, that when we close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate your feedback um, that you can provide. And also, um, this was just one of the many sessions being hosted. So be, be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And as it was mentioned before, um, in about a week, uh, you'll be able to find this session recording um, where you have been able to register for the other um, sessions as well. So thank you so much for um, attending and thank you for um, to our uh, panelists as well for um, for your time. Have a good day. All right. See you guys.